delicious. Yum yum, bon appetit, sir. I don't know. Ah, dude. She is brand new here. She's only been here for a day. She's 32 years old. She is a little crazy. It's a big freaking snake. Dude. I got double hands, bro. <laughs> the big snake, yeah. Forget the hook, bro. Once he's in there, he should be like, oh, okay. Let me just get the rest of my body in there. Please eat! I'm begging you. Please, for daddy. Please take this. Not looking forward to breeding these things and having a bunch of babies. Show some interest. Look at that! Yes! The whole name of the game. Do not get bit. Just don't get bit. Ho, ho, ho! What's up, guys? How the heck is everybody doing? Dude, it's beautiful out today. Like, holy cow. It's still getting really cold at night. Dude, last night I think the coldest was 47, which is really cold in Florida, guys. You gotta keep in mind. Very, very cold for these animals. Pain in the butt, gotta make sure heat is on everything. Make sure the birds are okay. Make sure the goats, they're pregnant, they're okay. The emus, they do their thing. They're pretty cold resilient. Thank God. But yes, I am sick of these cold nights. Right now it's beautiful. Right now it's probably like 78 degrees. Sun is out. It's gorgeous right now. Not a cloud in the sky. Not a single stinking cloud, guys. It is just, oh, look how beautiful that is. Today, we gotta get in that snake room. We got Josh and Brandon over. We gotta clean some snakes and do some training. Before we get into all that, we gotta feed the tortoises. <laughs> Make sure they're good. Save some room for little Brian. What else are we doing in today's video? Oh, and we got another macaw donated to us. Friend of a friend. We'll check her out as well. She's really, really cool. Oh, it's the March of the Tortoises. Look at these guys. That's Harriet, the smaller Aldab. Then we got Martin right here. We got Ruth. And then, uh, crap, I forget the other female's name. Sylvia? No? So, I ah, mean, I forget this one's name all the time. Jonah knows it. It's a female. Hi, how are you doing? Mm, there we go. Delicious. Yum, yum. Bon appetit, sir. We still don't have baby goats. They are very, very pregnant. See? Oh Look how freaking bulgy they are. And their teats are getting a lot bigger, too. Finally, so that's a good sign. Hopefully any day now. We thought that it was going to happen more towards the middle. Hey, don't bite my shirt. We thought it was going to happen more towards the middle of February, but it's here we are at the end of February and we still don't have any babies. So maybe before March, we got another, what, 10 days left of this month? I don't know. We'll find out. My baby to woke. Mwah. 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 Sweetest bird ever. And then the biggest jerk ever. Here, look, I'll give you a banana. Oh, God. <laughs> he scares me so much with that freaking beak, man. He just tries to kill me every day still. Ah! I'm your friend. I feed you. Oh, I just dropped everything on the floor. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Ah! All right, let me put you here. Give you some food. Then we got to check out the new bird and see if Callie, that's her name. Maybe she'll step off on me and be nice today. Ah! I don't know. Ah! Dude, let's go give them some food. There you go. Relax. Ah! Be nice. Hey, you'll be nice. What? Want to eat? So, you guys remember when we had Chevy over here? Chevy was Josh's female blue and gold. And when Josh was moving, he had Chevy over here for a few months and then he moved to his new place, brought Chevy back, yada, yada, yada. Rio has not had a friend since Chevy has been here. Buddy Matt, the other day, he was moving to Florida, moved to Melbourne, a few hours north of here, to work for one of my friends. And uh, the apartment that they moved into does not allow the cause. So he kind of was in a pickle and hit me up last minute. And he's like, hey, dude, I really need a good home for my bird. He's like, do you have any space? And I was like, yeah, actually, I would love to get a friend for Rio. So that way he just has a little homie to hang out with every day. And this is Callie right here. She is brand new here. She's only been here for a day. So I want to just see... Maybe I can get her to step up on me today. Very nice with Matt. Matt said that she likes men more than females. So let me go ahead and give Rio. Hold up, Rio. Go give Rio a peanut real quick. And then let's give Callie a peanut, maybe. You wanna step up on me, Mama? Wanna step up? Rio, wanna step up? Wanna step up and take it? Wanna step up? Huh? Wow, look at that. That's okay, it's a start. It's a start. There you go. See? I'm not that bad. That's what it's all about. Positive reinforcement. Get them to do a command or a behavior and then reward them with something that they like and that they want. 
Uh, you can see that she was very food motivated just now. And now she doesn't have food, so I really want to see how she's going to act. Are you going to get defensive? Are you going to let me just hold you like this? You see this other one? I'll give you another one. There you go. Very cool though. She's beautiful. Very similar colors to Taruk. She doesn't have as much yellow and orange on her as Taruk. Her tail's not as long. She's definitely nowhere near the size. She's 32 years old. Hopefully she's going to end up being a sweet bird over here, right? Can I touch you? Can I pet you, please? Can I pet you? Look, I'm just, it's all fun. Why not be nice? Come be nice. It's okay. Look. Pet you? It's nice. You see that? Macaws are so funny, man. Lots of work you gotta put into just making sure that they're comfortable with you. Mwah. <laughs> that was scary. Great. That was, that was a brave move. But you're gonna be good. So we're gonna put you down over here. I'm gonna give you some food. Show you that I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to just love you and take care of you. All right. So I'll give you a nice mix. We got some parrot diet with some dried veggies, some Cheerios, some walnuts, some almonds. We got some raisins, all that good stuff. Let them do their thing. We just gotta feed Stevie. Let's get in that snake room. All right, now we're in the snake room. Oh, we just had a little bit of fun outside with the boys. You guys have a good time? Yeah, great time. That was fun, right? So, a little rat update for you guys, too. The rats are still kind of crazy over here. It's been cold, like I said, so it hasn't been as abundant as the summer. But I still got a rat issue outside. I started baiting and poisoning all the rats in my garage. So, hopefully took care of the garage and the attic situation because they were in there, which was freaking crazy. Thank God they weren't in my house. But this outside situation with the birds, keeping the birds in their aviaries over here and just dude, dealing with bird food and chicken food over by the chicken coop, the rat issue over in both of those areas is just crazy because they go in and eat the bird's food, which is an absolute pain in the butt. But the birds during the day over here we have a crazy issue with the squirrels. The squirrels go right into the cage. Literally a bird can be eating out of the bowl and a squirrel will go right up to them and try to like fight them and mess with my birds and it's not cool. So we've been uh, exterminating them our own way with my, my man right here, right there. Uh -huh. Yep, yep, <laughs> see that thing? It is an air rifle. And that's been the only way to really regulate trying to keep my birds safe from all these other pests on the property that you really need to take care of. Because even once I move to a USDA permit, then I really, really, really need to be on top of everything. And this is not like we're just like killing things for fun over here. It's for the safety of my animals. So you have to keep that in mind. The only reason why we are exterminating animals like this is for the safety of our other animals. All right. So you got to keep that in mind. Yeah, and Josh has a good point too. Like, it's not like we're just like killing these animals, the rats, the squirrels, whatever. We're feeding them to the alligators. The alligators eat everything that we shoot. So just keep that in mind. It's not like we're just tossing these things in the garbage and wasting meat over here. It is all going back full circle. But that is not what we're doing today. Today we are doing snake stuff. We got some training to do with the boys. We got a couple cages to clean. Gabby is due to shed any day now. Kilo just ate again yesterday. He's also due to shed. We got these false water cobras that aren't paired up right now, but I fed both of them yesterday. Josh, you wanna put the female back in the cage? We gotta switch that. Oh yeah, she's in the rack right now. We definitely gotta put her back in there. So that's a good, that's a good little starter snake. You know, practice cobra, don't get bit. All right, let's do it. The first thing, Josh is gonna take this male false water cobra out. Oh yeah, he'll come out after you. He is a little crazy, but it's really good practice, especially for doing venom stuff. Because if you do get bit, you're not gonna die. It's not even gonna be that bad. There you go, just like that. There we go, get him on the hook. And here we go. Oh, nice. That went real smooth for you. <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. That's awesome. Keep it chill. So now the female is. I know that is labeled an insularis, but there is a false water cobra in there. So that's where the female is, Josh. So you want to just slide that out. Always open up with a hook. Hey, pretty girl. Of course, just... she's made a mess of her water bowl just because it's right. a small thing. Now, when you get her out, I want to see the size of her too because, oh. guys, this female falsy is getting huge. Now, she's my European hypo. Super, super pretty, light colors. And she's not bad either. When she's in her, like, big cage, she's a little bit defensive. But once she's out, dude, she's getting huge, man. She's definitely pushing six foot. She'll get eight foot easily. Let's go ahead. 
Get her up in her enclosure. Should have pulled that water bowl out of there so we Oops. can just freshen that up. That's okay. She's not super venomous, just mildly venomous. So we'll just get that out, take care of her water, and move on to the next thing. My turn. So I'm gonna take Shateed out just because she's Shateed. A little bit on the harder side to deal with. So we're gonna go in here, open up the cage with the hook, watch her head so she doesn't come out at me. Try to get the back section of her body out first without making a freaking mess because she's going into her hide box. See, this is where she gets a little spicy. Just keep moving her body, grab her midsection, get her right behind the head just like that. It's the safest way to go about this. I don't know. Real close. Too close to comfort. Just gotta remain calm. Don't make any quick movements because that's what she is gonna go off with. Let's go ahead and slowly get her into here. There we go. Nice and simple. Make sure her head stays down. She's not like Rusty. You know how with Rusty, I'll just go and grab him behind the hood and stick him back in the trash can. You cannot do that with Shatid. She will turn right around and bite you. So you gotta be real careful. So now that I got her out, we're just gonna spot clean her cage real quick. It's not even really that dirty. She just has a couple little poop piles. And then as you can see, her heat light went out as well. Sometimes you gotta give it a little hit and it'll turn back on, but that's not the case with this one. So let's go ahead and clean this up. We'll grab a new light bulb for her. So she's got some heat again, even though this room stays a nice ambient temperature. It's not like these cages get cold or anything if the heat lights do go out. But I still like to have some added heat so their, their basking spot is at least 95 degrees. They can come over here to the cool side if they want. It stays around 80. You can go to the hot side at 90. Give them a choice. Put their high box right here. Go grab a heat light real quick and we'll put it back. Got the heat situated and it was not what we expected, honestly. Got on a stool. Check the heat light. The heat light wasn't even there. This freaking black dragon is like a Houdini. Dude, I don't know how the hell he does it, but we've come in to this room three days, three days, three days in a row now. The lock is off and on the floor, cage is cracked open, and today when I walked into the room, he was sitting on top of the hog nose snakes. You see the hog nose rack right there? He was literally sitting on the right hand side as soon as I walked into the door, it looked me right in the face. And then jumped off and I had to catch up and put him back in here. So he must have been around this room and knocking lights over, which is dangerous as a fire hazard. This light was still on and it was pinned up against the wall. So thank God we caught this one we did because if that heated up and caused a fire, it would be terrible. You guys know, that's my biggest fear, is things catching on fire. Show them the lock, too. Yeah, it, it, dude, it, is it, it's weird, because, dude, it's staying on real good right now. I don't know how the hell he gets it off, man. We make sh double sure, trust me, like, we make sure this cage is locked. I don't know how the hell he keeps it. I walked back in here yesterday and made sure that one was locked. Dude, I know, I double check it every time. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, he figures out how to open it. I have no idea. Freaking Houdini, like I said. So let's go ahead, get your teeth back in her enclosure. She's just coiled up down here, acting like she's a nice snake. <laughs> she is very pretty though, super light colored. She is real pretty. Maybe give her some drumsticks later. Go ahead, put her in her enclosure. Let her crawl in there nice and safely. There we go, keep her on that side. And now since she's on this side, you can, you can do it either way, it all depends. You can close it with a hook or if it's easy enough and safe. You don't have any shots that she could take. Close it with your hand very carefully. And that's that. All right, so now Brandon is gonna take out Kilo. All right, so it's Brandon's turn. Get Mr. Kilo out, open him up with the hook. Go for that back loop. There we go, nice. Hey, hey, Kilo. Hey, dude. Come look at me. Yeah, he likes to climb up. Right. Well, cooperate, perform. You can just put him in the tub. Okay. Yeah, you don't gotta worry about it. There it goes, there you go. Nice. In the can you go. Now he's, he can still stretch all the way out and come out this thing like he's about to do right now, but you got a couple seconds before he does so. Just go ahead and put him back in there. Put a top on there, make sure it's nice and secure. Put the hook on the can. Kilo, cooperate. See that fancy new snake receptacle that Chandler got? No, I didn't. Dude, it's so sick. 
I gotta get a smaller version for this room. Chandler got like this new, it's like a, the black PVC cages. It's super sick. Like it's got his logo on it. It's got a, it's got a glass or plexiglass top that slides. You can fill it up with water to soak your animals in. It's just really, really neat. I don't really have the room for something that big in here. I would have to make something more along the sides of this guy right here, but it is super sick. Props channel. There we go. Nice and clean. Wasn't really that dirty. Yeah, you are a professional fluffer. My, my main position here. <laughs> All right, let's get Mr. Kilo out. Open it up with the hook. Oh, of course, yeah. he's right there. That's why you open it up with the hook, guys. Sometimes your snakes are right at the top lip. You don't want to have your hand on that area because that could be a bite. The whole name of the game. Do not get bit. <laughs> don't get bit. So there we go. Perfect posture. Yeah, dude, he is awesome. Real cool cobra to work with. Sure. He's not the craziest. He just wants to explore and do his thing. Hey, right, Key. Mr. Key, little dude, you pretty boy. Look at that. Beautiful. So Rusty's up next. Rusty's cage is not really dirty at all because we just cleaned it the other day, gave him fresh water and everything. But this is a training video today, so we are going to still take him out and let these guys get hands on with the king because he is definitely an important one to learn how to handle here. Um, let's uh, rock, paper, scissors. You and Josh, whoever one. wins takes him out, whoever loses puts him back. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Boom. Sounds All you, bad. baby boy. There you go. So as you can see, Brandon is going for the more mid-section loop of his body. I'm trying to get that mid-section out. So that way he has something to hold on and work with. It's perfect. There Just we go. Freaking long. No, no, he's huge. <laughs> You're doing good though. That's the perfect spot you want to grab him. And then he's just wrapped around the water bowl over there. Just kind of let him do his thing. There he goes. It's not what you want to do with a normal king cobra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if he was shatied or had an attitude or something, it'd be a lot harder of a situation. Just make sure you watch his tail, don't step on him. He's a lot of snakes, dude. Like, look, <laughs> like, keep going out. he still has half of his body in the cage and more than half of his is out. Just watch his tail, make sure you don't Jesus. stamp on him. I know, he's heavy. He's a big freaking snake. Dude. He's, I got double hands, bro. <laughs> He's a big snake, yeah. Forget the hook, bro. Sometimes the hook is not your friend, especially with a snake like Rusty. That was good. He wasn't, uh, he's not being defensive or anything, so it's okay that his head got that close, you know? You don't really want to let that happen, but it's okay. This is Rusty that we are working with. <laughs> it's not Brandon's first time handling Rusty. There you go, almost. He's got a lot of snake. Watch his tail. Josh, lid. Make sure it's double click. There you go. Now it's secure. Booyah, baby. There you go. <laughs> it's a lot of clean, bro. Get in there. Yeah, I mean, give it a little once over. It looks like it's pretty clean. There's a little piece of shed right there. That's really it. Give it a nice little fluff for him. And then, Josh. All right, it's your turn. Yeah. King Cobra time. time. This is your first time? First uh, time rusty, yeah. First time I'm all that, but. I never like really pull them in and pull them out type of shit. Well, today's the day. Today's the day. Go. Josh's turn. See how Josh made sure to see where his head is at. Rusty's already coming out. I'm gonna let him get out a little more. Now, if you really wanted to, you could just move the trash can over to where the opening is and let him fall back in there. That would be the easiest way to do it. The safest way. Pretty much what Josh is doing right now. There you go. Get him in his home. Once he's in there, he should be like, oh, okay. Let me just get the rest of my body in there. There it goes. Good job, Josh. Yeah, kill that. Look at that tail. Dude, he is getting like pine cones. gigantic. <laughs> yeah, dude, his tail is just pattern. Mm -hmm. His tail is like almost two foot. Yeah, the pattern at the end of his tail. Yeah, like this whole thing right here. So sick. Yeah, one more. There you go, buddy. Thanks for being nice. There you go, dude. Good job. So we didn't make a video about it, but yesterday we moved all the hognose snakes 
We made a video of taking them out of the refrigerator, but we did not make a video of setting them up just because it was a lot of work yesterday and I just wanted to get everything done. So we moved the racks in here. Everything is set up on their heat cycle. The heat tape is working. They got a 90 degree basking area in the back and then obviously they got ambient temperature towards the front. Um, after brumation, they don't eat for a little bit because they're still on the cold side. You have to get them acclimated to the heat again. So now that they have been on heat, hopefully I tried feeding them yesterday. They didn't want anything to do with anything. So hopefully today, now that they're a little bit more warmed up, I can get some to actually eat some food. So we're gonna go and start feeding some things. We'll start off with Penny right here. She's one of the females that was refusing meals at the end of last year. So I took it upon myself to not brumate her and I just didn't want her to be put in the winter and possibly not make it because she was on the skinnier side without taking a lot of meals. But as you can see, she's eating on her own now and she's doing great. So maybe she'll breed next year. Hey dude, look at the puppy. Come on, please. Please, please, please. Please, please, please. Now, sometimes with these guys, if they don't take it right away, I'll just take the rat or mouse, whatever I'm feeding them, and I'll put it on top of the hide box for them. She's getting huffy and puffy. Not really showing much interest, though. So I'm just gonna leave that in there and hope for the best. Then we got this Ultra Mel down here. Let's see how she is acting today. She's right in the back on the heat. So hopefully she's nice and warm and maybe getting a little hungry. Come on, please. Please eat for me. Please eat for me. You haven't eaten since November. You should be so hungry. Come on. Come on. Hognose snakes are a pain in the butt, man. I wish I was working with a species that was easier to feed. These guys are just an absolute pain in the butt sometimes. So again, I'm just gonna take the hopper, put it on top of the hide box. Hopefully she calms down and wants to eat that later. Next up is Sunflower, my extreme red female. Her boyfriend is um, what's his name? Dragon. He's the smaller male. Come on, please. Please. Everybody's so huffy and puffy and you're still not hungry. Come on, man. Please eat. I'm begging you. We yeah. should put like a, maybe like a little platter in their cage and put like maybe a few different meal choices for them. We could. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt, bro. Yeah. Hognose snakes, dude. Not looking forward to breeding these things and having a bunch of babies because of... <laughs> dude, feeding baby hognose snakes is such a pain totally in the butt. Imagine. Frogs, fish, you got scent things. Dude, it's just, it's a whole lot of work, man. Having babies is a pain in the butt. Broomhilda, how are you acting today? This is my super arctic conda. Come here, please. Would you like to eat? She's normally a great eater. So is Sunflower. They were slamming food last year. Come on, please, 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 please. Not showing much interest at all. This is the one that ate yesterday, isn't it? This one didn't eat yesterday. Oh. No, I wish. The only one I ate yesterday though. was a little male. Yeah, she's got great body weight. She's thick. She's got scale separation the whole nine. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the hide box. I'm gonna flip it upside down. I'm gonna put the rat right there. And hopefully she eats it later. We'll just have to come check him again later. We'll see who's eating, who's not eating. Gwen is in the back on the heat. Come on, Gwen. Somebody eat. She's another super arctic. Come on. Super Arctic Conda, because she's got the spots, not a Super Conda without any. Also wants to be a pain in the butt. I'm just going to leave that right there on our hide box. Eleven, my favorite one. My main gal. I love Eleven. And I'll love you even more if you take this. Please. Please, for daddy. Please take this. Come on. Why? <laughs> Such a pain in the butt, dude. But she's so freaking pretty. And then the male that I have to pair her to pair her with is freaking a stunner too. His name is Pinky because he's nice and pink. So I'm really excited to see he's het sunburst as well. Pinky right here, this guy. So Pinky, let's see if you want to eat something. Come on, please. Are you gonna show some interest? Look at that! Oh. Yes! Ah! Thank God! But I think he's the one that ate yesterday. Also, one of them ate. No, no, I'm not really sure. We gotta look at my little chart. Then we got Django. He's the super black Arctic male but does not have a female and dude if you guys have a female super arctic at home and you want to buy him send me an email because i don't have a female for him so a, a couple of these i no longer have mates for thought i did but doing everything yesterday we have some lone stranglers so i'm probably just gonna get rid of them because i'm not gonna breed them and i honestly don't really care to get another female i'm just gonna what email should they hit you up for tyler nolan booking at gmail.com get first pick guys yeah, because towards the end of the year, I'm probably going to put them on Morph Market or even bring them to the Daytona Reptile Expo that we're going to be at in August. 
and maybe just get rid of him then. Super cool snake. He's got great colors. It's a really cool hognose. And he's a great eater too, even though everything is coming out of rumination right now and it's not eating. And they're not as excited for food as they normally are. Hopefully that'll change with some heat. Here, come on, dude. Doc, this is that little tiny male that I got as a really little baby. And we took him, we smuggled him into the hospital for one of my daughter's ultrasounds. And then FWC actually called me saying that somebody called the hospital, complained that I brought a snake there. And then FWC called me and they were like, hey, you brought a snake into a hospital the other day? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, okay. Um, they called and complained about it. And I was like, all right, well, there's no laws saying I can't do that. There's no nothing. There's no anything. It's not against the law. There's no rules about it. None of that. And FWC was like, yeah, you're right. Just... Maybe don't do that again, because people didn't like it very much. I was like, yeah, whatever. You're so no more snakes at the hospital. I thought it was gonna be cool. I didn't want to leave them in the car, honestly. It's not like I was like, brought a snake to the hospital from my house. I thought like you brought a cobra. We ended up, no, we, yeah, exactly. Not like I brought a cobra to the hospital. We were just, uh, picked him up on the way to the hospital, and I didn't want to leave him. It was like during summertime. I didn't want to leave him in the car. And obviously have them get hot and die. So the safest thing is to bring him with me. Just stick his little butt in the diaper bag and nobody will know, right? So we got Dragon. Dragon is the male extreme red who will hopefully eat for me. With these guys, it helps to rub it on their nostril scale like that, their rostral scale. Give it a little rubby rub. Of course not. So we're going to take him, put him right there. Hopefully he eats it later. I have no idea. We're going to have to just see him, but we gotta try to feed everything. So this is Nighthawk. Nighthawk is super cool, but he's a lone male that I have. Probably not gonna use him for any breeding. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, flip it upside down, put that right there for him. Hopefully he eats that later. And who are you? Martin! Martin is a adult male snow conda, so he still has the spots, he's not a super conda. Whoa, he must have just been drinking water because he just had a whole bunch of water come out of his nostril. He ate yesterday or the day before too. Actually, you know, yesterday he ate, so he might not be that hungry. I'm just gonna put it up there for him. Bada bing, bada boom, and then these two guys are empty. So yeah, we got one, two, three, we got six males right there, and then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably like eight females. Not bad, hopefully we can get something to freaking breed this year, guys. Trying. First year doing hogs, and let me tell you guys, props out to the hog nose breeders out there because it is not an easy game. These guys are very hard to feed and on the difficult side to get them brumated and bred. It's, all, it's a whole lot of work, especially feeding these babies. It's crazy. Got some leftover meals in here. Let's feed, uh, feed off some of the little rattlesnakes. We'll give Chandler a meal, feed some other stuff. The Baron's Racers, those guys can use a couple. We'll feed them as well. Here, get my keys, give Chandler something, he's in the back. Hey dude, just put another order in with Vision. Vision is actually sending me four more of these 432s, and then they're sending me another one of these 211s. So we're gonna put in a whole nother stack, five footers right here, move all this down, get rid of these cages that the gaboons are in. We're gonna put the gaboons and the gabinos and everything all in the same freaking tower, because that's gonna be awesome. And then everything, all this heat we can finally hook up to. But uh, we're just waiting for these new cages to come in. Where is a bone grabber? Let's give him an adult mouse. Nice and warm for him. Here you go, Chandler. Sweet. Look at that. Just a nice little shot. And that's all it takes. He just bites it once. He's a very, very non-aggressive eater. He always just takes it very gently. He bites it gently. As crazy as that sounds. He's a very gentle little rattlesnake. Chandler, you sweet man. Now we're gonna feed the barons also. The barons we have in these for now. We used to keep them outside, but as you guys know, Florida has been very, very cold. So now we're keeping them inside in these racks so they stay nice and warm. I'm really happy to have these barons and I'm happy that I bought them when I did a year or so ago because they are extremely hard to find now. Even the green barons, these ones right here, which are a little bit easier to find, the green guys. These guys were going for like five, 600 bucks a piece a year ago and now you can't find baby greens for less than two grand. So I'm definitely gonna try to breed these guys. They're a little bit on the crazy side right now, but they are great eaters. So I'm just gonna leave that up there for him. We'll eat that in a bit. A couple of these will take them off the tongs, but not always. Let's go ahead, that's a little too big for you. Go ahead and give you a hopper. We gotta clean out this aspen in here. We got a couple pieces of poop in here. These guys are colubrids, so their metabolism is very fast. So it's pretty much as soon as they eat, they freaking poop the next day. And we try to feed them like two or three times a week just to get some good size on them. Nice. 
See, he took it. But yeah, they got great size. They're nice and thick. Oh, of course, he's getting irritated and let go. We're just gonna leave him alone so he eats that. Now, this is the blue. And I'm super stoked I still have a blue. This is a female. The male that I had, I bought a male a long time ago with her, and he actually died because I had some live plants in the cage, and one of the planters that the plants was in had this little tiny hole on it, and the snake tried to actually crawl through the hole, ended up getting stuck and died overnight, and I found him in the next morning, and it was a really big bummer. Because these guys, this was $700 when I bought him, when I bought her, and now you cannot find these guys online for less than like $3,500. It's just crazy. Not a lot of people are breeding them. If you can find them. Yeah, if you can find them. Hey, would you eat this, please? Excuse I've contacted me. breeders and asked them if they do sell one. They're, nope. No, I don't know. Anybody that has them, they're just holding on. Excuse me. You have food right here. Please, eat this. Things like turquoise. No? You gotta clean these guys out. Yeah. Look, that moth is still alive. Got a moth in this water bowl. Gotta clean that out for him. Give him some fresh water. Well, these waters were changed two days ago? Yeah, it's just always cleaning. Always giving new waters. So we're just gonna, we're not gonna bother him. I'm gonna put water in there later. I'm gonna leave that mouse right on top, let her eat. And then tomorrow we'll go through this again. We'll give everybody new substrate, new waters and all that stuff. And just let them do their thing today. Cause the more you mess with your animals, you definitely don't want to feed them or clean their cages right before you feed them because then they're gonna get all antsy and they're not gonna eat. You wanna let them chill, be comfortable in their area and then they're gonna eat. And that is it. Just like that. Oh, Chandler's eating. Hey, he's going ass to mouth, man. That's not how you do it, dude. That's exactly how you do it. Yeah, I guess, that is exactly, I guess some people are like that, all right? Not over here, okay? Gross. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's training video. We got the boys over here getting their hours, doing some things, feeding things, doing some pest control and all that stuff. I think we're going to go get back to the pest control situation. I'll see you guys on the next one. Appreciate y'all for watching. TylerNolanTattoos.com for all of your merch. Tyler Nolan booking for tattoo appointments. You can also go on my website, fill out the form, yada yada. I'll reach back to you hopefully in the next few days if you want to get on the schedule for this year. I'm still booking for April and May. I have a few spots open in April and then a bunch of stuff open in May. So hit me up. Not doing tours yet. I get so many emails about tours. Trust me, guys, I want to do tours so bad, but I have to do, finish a lot of stuff over here before I'm comfortable with people coming over here and seeing my stuff. I'm very self conscious about it. I go to a lot of different properties and everybody's got their stuff together. I've only been here for a year. There's a lot of things to take care of over here and just get it looking primo because I want this to be like zoo quality, super clean, everything's set up, ready for people to come check out. All right, so until next time, appreciate you for watching. God bless. Love you. Later. Goodbye.